He reads off a teleprompter. So it's always this illusion that it's Obama violating the Bill of Rights and Constitution. It's, and if we could just get rid of Obama, everything would be okay. No. We've got to audit the Federal Reserve and then abolish it and arrest the bankers. If you don't get rid of them, things only get worse. Going back to Stuart Rhodes. Stuart lost you there. I was bringing up the article Paul Watson wrote about Newsmax's story with the former yeah. White House speechwriter John L. Perry saying that uh, in an article originally posted at Newsmax website, Perry wrote, there's a remote, although gaining possibility, America's military will intervene in a last resort to resolve the Obama problem. Don't dismiss it as unrealistic. Military intervention is what Obama exponentially accelerating agenda for fundamental change towards a Marxist state is uh, inviting upon America a coup, and it's not an ideal option, but Obama's radical ideal is not acceptable or reversible writes Perry, uh, they're, they're trying to spin these type of articles as if this is something Oath Keepers wants, when meanwhile it's former Bush people that are actually talking about this. And doesn't that reinforce the myth that Obama actually runs anything, when instead Ron Paul is running a counter coup with the In the Fed movement to remove the illegitimate corporate dictatorship? That's who we need to be talking about kicking out but through legal parameters, once we educate the public that they're a bunch of criminal Ken Lay Madoff types. Right. Well, the Newsmax article didn't mention Oath Keepers in particular, but here's, here's the problem is that what it's proposing is a false solution. You don't violate the Constitution to say that and a military coup would be as wildly unconstitutional as anything any president could do. And so that's not the way to go. It, it's the people themselves. If anyone's going to revolt or, or, or overthrow a corrupt cabal in government is the people, not the military. And so that's, that's, a, that's our answer to that, is that the oath is to the Constitution, and, and nowhere in the Constitution is the military, is some gentleman's sunglasses, authorized to get upon himself to scrap the civil government and assume military command of the country. It doesn't exist. And so we're writing a rebuttal to that piece that will be on our a website. A absolutely. In, in 1775-1776, for those that don't know, they went and got the elected representatives of the 13 colonies to come and meet representing the people to then vote. You don't have a guy with four stars or five stars with sunglasses right. on. And, and, and I want to point out, the nationals, and you've written papers on this, you can speak to it. We've had JAG officers on about it as well. And I've studied it in depth. We already have a military coup, as Thomas Barnett writes, but it's a good one, they think where the cor global corporations now control our military through the National Security Council. And so you don't replace one military coup with another military coup. You point out how it's illegal and illegitimate, and we remove the coup of the Federal Reserve. Well, back to what you said about the founding generation. I mean, look at the Declaration of Independence. You don't see George Washington's name on there or any of his officers. He didn't call the shots. He was a humble servant. In fact, he signed off in every correspondence to Congress, humble servant, your humble servant. So he put himself under the command of the civil leaders of the revolution. And so that's where we have to follow the same model. You don't have the military assume powers and assume control. So, but you're right, it's also, it's also that if you were to do a military coup, that could be falling right into the hands of, of people who would love to strap the Constitution. So they offer you this, this one problem here, and, and then they offer the solution, and the false solution is a military coup. And you wind up going from the frying pan to the fire. You still scrap the Constitution, it's gone. And so now you're dependent upon whoever happens to be the general in charge. You know, So that's not how it's done in a republic. Absolutely. Again, Stuart Rhodes, obviously in a busy office today, as we speak with him. I've thrown out a lot of issues I want to discuss, and, I, and I've got some calls that uh, I want to go to, but... You're, you're going to write a rebuttal to the article written by the former White House speechwriter John L. Perry for Newsmax. We'd love to publish that at InfoWars.com as soon as we uh, get that, Stuart Rhodes. But, but other issues that you're looking at right now, the military, uh, what is their mood? W what are the police saying? When you write these articles about the New World Order for SWAT magazine, what are the paramilitary local police saying? Well, overwhelmingly, we, we, we get a positive response. Of course, we're getting the people who, who like our message most, but, but I, think, I think quite a few people, rank-and-file military and police, are waking up. And I've even heard through the grapevine that, that, some, that there are some generals who are behind what we're doing here, are aware of those keepers and, and are in, in agreement. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's all 
all about waking them up to what's going on in the big picture. And, and once they see it, most of them are men of honor, and, and they'll be on our side. And so that's that's why you shouldn't you shouldn't think folks should not think that oh they're all going to follow orders they're all going to do these things uh, they're waking up now you know of course we get folks who write in after G20 and say what about that you know how come uh, if you're all you know if you're all going to keep your oath and why did that happen well it's because we haven't reached those officers yet you know it's we just started you got to give us a little bit of time so and you got to help you got to help you know don't don't just, don't just criticize us and say well that shows you're failing you know. Go out and reach them before they get to, to the G20, before they get get nationalized and sent someplace else across the country. Well, Stuart, we, we also out. know that, and this has come out in COINTELPRO documents from the 60s and 70s, it's come out with Hal Turner running around saying, go after the feds when, when he was at the FBI admits, work for them, that, right. that, that there are people always calling for violence and always pushing violence and always saying, we're wimps, we're bad. Ron Paul isn't doing enough. Alex Jones isn't doing enough. Stuart Rose isn't doing enough. A lot of those people, it's turned out, are operatives paid to be online and to call into radio to just get everyone dissenting instead of saying, in less than a year, look how far Oath Keepers has gone. In the last few years, look how the Ron Paul revolution's gone towards auditing the Fed, identifying the real shadow government. I mean, we are, we are having huge victories and this is basic military psychology where the establishment's telling us we're losing, we have no hope, oh, you're pathetic, or you're an agent, you're an agent. They're just doing all of this to get people to hesitate. Yeah, well, and also we have people who, who claim to be on our side who just don't understand the Constitution. I've had people that, that you know, email and say, when are you going to have the military march on Washington to stop, you know, vaccination of children? You know, as, as though we have the authority to go do that. You know, the mess, here's the thing, is that we are in a, a mess because the American people were asleep at the switch for decades. And it's not up to the military and police to fix that. Folks out there are going to have to get off the couch and go out and do it themselves. Well, we need an asymmetrical approach. If people will just put up flyers everywhere and hand out DVDs and go into every pharmacy and every school with the insert for the vaccine, saying it causes Gillian Berets, saying it causes brain damage, saying it can sterilize you, saying it can give you cancer, it's on it. If, if the average person would quit bitching at us for not doing enough and they would get up off their fat asses and I'm sorry to talk like that and get out there and engage the new world order our problems will be over very quickly that's right well it's all it's all it's already working though you've got people now nurses refusing the shot you've got people who are refusing it because they realize it's dangerous and that's because we have the internet we have YouTube you know we have your show you know this, this, it's already helping but you're right the answer is, is to get out there and spread the message and help not to criticize you know I, I, criticize me for not doing enough, you know, or you. you know, you're right. But I'm telling you, nine times out of ten, we've tracked their IP addresses and stuff and test. Most of these people are paid. They're working for big foundations or they're working for the government. The Pentagon admits they're on the web, and they know how to get us fighting, and their best way to operate is to pose as, quote, conspiracy theorists to get us in fighting with each other. I mean, it's we right are. out of the COINTELPRO playbook. You know, I saw a thread on, on Daily Coast, in fact, where, where one guy was saying that the, he, was, he was advising other readers there to go to conservative sites and pretend they're a conservative and, and then talk and then use racist language. Yeah, no, no, they do it. Website. They've been caught. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you see these ridiculous comments like, like, yeah, blacks are all scum and filth, and then the person still leaves their handle and you go find their their uh, MySpace account, and, and, and it's a black guy. And, and you know, he's a big Obama supporter. You're absolutely right. They're doing that. How do we counter that? How do we counter that type of of, of deception? Well, I think, I think um, you know, sunlight's the best antidote, the best, the best antiseptic. You just expose it like we're doing right now. And, and folks shouldn't buy into it. They should look... They should look with a jaundiced eye at anybody who's calling for violence. That's how you, that's how you pick the agent provocateur out. That's the old joke. It's the guy who's trying to get you to do something illegal. You know? Well, they've caught agent provocateurs in Denver last year and Canada. Mainstream news admits the police go and attack their own police for the news cameras, and then no one goes to jail. Shouldn't the commanders that gave those orders get in big trouble for ordering police to engage in false flag operations? 
Well, I think so. I think, I think it's entrapment at the very, at the very least, you know. Um, but as, as we know, it's been, it's been watered down. But the rules have been, the lines have been blurred and watered down for so long. Uh, we're going to have to try to counteract that bit by bit and officer by officer. In fact, so. what the police commanders say when they get caught doing this from Canada to Australia to the United States, England, you name it, Italy, they got caught in Greece this year. I'm sure you, you probably saw those newscasts where mainstream right. news admitted the police were dressed up as anarchists being ordered by police in alleyways. It was caught on video to in uniform to go bash out windows of cars and businesses to demonize the mainline protesters. And the police said, oh, that was just a drill. And so now when they go attack other cops on camera for the news cameras so they can attack the peaceful crowd, they go, oh, that was just a drill. That was just an exercise.